You're listening to Thursday Night Tailgate with Chris Mascaro and Bob Lazari, where NFL legends live on. Back to you, boys. It's him. He's alive. All right, now back with us here on Thursday Night Tailgate is former Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback Terry Hanratty. Let me remind you about Terry's background. He's from Butler, Pennsylvania, which is about 35 miles north of Pittsburgh. In high school, Terry was a four-sport star playing football, basketball, baseball, and he also ran track. He played it in his college ball at Notre Dame, where he was a three-year starter and a two-time All-American and was a part of their 1966 national championship team along with our good friend Rocky Blyer, who, of course, Terry reunited with in Pittsburgh. Terry still ranks 11th all-time in passing yards and touchdowns at Notre Dame, one place ahead of Joe Montana, oh, by the way. He was a second-round draft pick in 1969 by the Steelers, and he played in the NFL from 69 to 1976. All but his last season was in Pittsburgh. He finished that last season in Tampa Bay, being a part of their inaugural season in 1966. Terry was a part of two of the Steelers Super Bowl championship teams in Super Bowls 9 and 10, and we're very excited he is back with us again tonight here on Thursday Night Tailgate. Hey, Terry, Chris, and Bob, thanks for coming back on the show. Hi, Terry. Great to be with you guys. That's some long introduction there. <laughs> in fact, I can go I can go on record and say I use a, a Louisville slugger. Is I that play. right? Oh, That's certainly. It. There you go. Is, is, there, is there another bat? Yeah, right? No, not to us, there's no. not. Terry, I want to start our time with you tonight by, by getting your thoughts on your alma mater, Notre Dame. Off to a nice 2-0 and start, a couple of close wins over Michigan and Ball State. They've got three ranked teams left on their schedule this year in Stanford, Virginia Tech, and USC, of course. So I want to get your expectations. What do you think of the Fighting Irish, and is do they have an opportunity to get themselves into the playoffs? You know, I think they have a real good shot. I think that I think they're very balanced. I think the uh Wimbush, the quarterback, I think he needs you know, I think he's gonna play very well. You know, I'm I'm very optimistic about him. And uh I think the defense is you know, the defense as usual is I should as normal for a football team, the defense comes around first. The offensive line, you know, they have a lot of new guys in there so that I think they're sort of feeling their way around. But you know, now it's it's gonna it's gonna you know, the next couple of weeks are going to show whether, you know, they have a, a, an opportunity, to, you know, to uh, progress in the year. And, Terry, you know, I'm from Pittsburgh, huge Steeler fan. I didn't like what I saw last Sunday, particularly from Ben, who struggled. I don't know. Do you, was, was Sunday uh, one bad game, you know, as a result of maybe, you know, not getting enough reps in the preseason? The, the offense just wasn't in sync yet. They'll work it out, or or, or should we be worried? I would, I'm, I'm a little concerned. You know, I think, uh, you, know, you gotta look at Cleveland's a lot better team than they were in the last couple of years. I think they have a lot of, you know, especially on defense, I think they, they've added, a, you know, a lot of different weapons. And, you know, I think, uh, Ben was obviously not his, his normal self. So now I just saw that he missed his second day of practice, uh, because of some sore, sore elbow. But, uh, you know, they, they have to rebound, rebound this week and Kansas City's got a heck of a football team. You know, so it's going to be, uh, you know, a slugfest. And you can't – think about football. You can't lose too many games <laughs> or you're out. So, you know, you mm-hmm. got to get it done early. And, Terry, going back to to your days, you know, in, in Pittsburgh, you know, over the last couple of decades, you know, it's sort of been Steelers-Ravens have been the big heated rivalry. Now things with the Bengals have started to heat up over the last few years. But going back to your time, who was the big heated rival for the Steelers? Was it the Browns back then or – where, where was the big, you know, angst, and we don't really like one another, and we can't wait to get after it? Well, it was definitely the Browns. I mean, you know, just the, you know, it was only a couple hundred miles apart. And, uh, you know, the old Browns, I mean, before they moved to uh, to Baltimore. And, uh, you know, so it was uh, then in Cincinnati, you know, we were both coming up. You know, they were the new franchise, but, you know, we were sort of the new franchise under Chuck Noll because we have 40 years of not winning. You know, so we sort of grew up together as a, a winning. Then, you know, also Houston. You know, they were, you know, they had a, a great team down there. You know, Dan Pas- Pastorini and, you know, these guys were just, uh, you know, really, really good teams. So that, I think it was a really difficult conference. And, uh, when you, if you won that one, I think you're going to do some, do some, uh, make some noise. Bob, questions for Terry? Great to have you back, Terry. I want I want to bring you back to your Notre Dame ga- uh, days again. I I I just didn't realize it's almost been a year 
since we lost Eric Parsi again. And then, you know, he had such an incredible impact on so many of the guys we've had on this show. But uh, yourself, Terry, I mean, he, he was, uh, again, a national champion coach. We've talked a little bit about his, uh, his legacy in the past. But to you personally, uh, did you have a great relationship uh, with him at all times and, and right up until he passed? Well, we had we had a wonderful relationship, and you know, actually, up until almost the day he passed, because we, I was in South Bend, and we had scheduled to meet for lunch, and he every Wednesday he and a couple of his friends go to a certain uh, restaurant in uh, South Bend, so I was going to meet them all over there, and I uh, get there, and the normal table that they have every week was empty, and I asked the guy, I said, "Well, is, is, where's Era?" Well, he didn't call in for a for a reservation today. So I, you know, I called his house and I talked to his wife Katie, and you know he had a touch of MRSA, and uh, so he got on the phone. We talked for about 15 minutes, and he finally said, "Terry, said, you know, I got to go." He said, "You could blow me over with a feather." And I knew, you know, he's, he was, you know, he's up there at age, in his 90s, so you, know, you knew you sort of take, took a deep breath at the time. And uh, you know, about a week later, he, he passed, and uh, sad because he was such a not only a wonderful coach, but you know, just a wonderful human being. He really cared about kids getting through school with their with their diploma, and that was the, that was, I think, his number one concern. And I can't think of any game that we ever went into where we were surprised at what we saw. You know, sometimes we went in and we didn't play up to our ability, and we lost. But we were never shocked because we were era was such a such a. Uh, what do I want to say, a, a control freak on, you know, how, how to, the, you know, put the team together for a certain team and this and that and offense, the defense. Every, he dotted every I across every T. And it was just up to us to, uh, to execute. And Terry, the Notre Dame experience on the whole, I think of Notre Dame and I, I think about the, the alumni atmosphere and the spray painting of the helmets and there's so much tradition and game days are just so huge there. Uh, on game days, did you have a chance to really appreciate all this or were you just too uh, involved in the game at hand to really know what kind of uh, program you were playing for well you never got to appreciate it because everybody everybody outside the city was having all the fun you know they were having all the, <laughs> pre, the pre-game parties i didn't realize it until you know, years after i graduated and it came back for a game i said wow this is nice out here this is fun you know this party before the game and all that stuff but you were just so focused on a game that you, you had no concept of what was going on outside the stadium. I mean, the stadium, you knew it was going to be raucous because it was that way, you know, every game we played at home and even on the road. But, uh, so that, that was always wonderful to do. But, you know, after, you know, during the game, you know, you were just, you know, focused on, you know, what you had to do with that particular play. Terry, you got drafted in 69. You were a second round pick. Joe Green was, was the first round pick. That was Chuck Knoll's first ever draft. But I've read some stories, you know, about Joe when under his own admission, he acted very poorly early on, almost walked away from the team at one point because of all the losing. Was, was it a challenge for Chuck to kind of keep Joe happy and engaged for those first few years as you guys built towards becoming a winner? I didn't want to think it was. It was, it was quite obvious in 1969, we were a bad football team. You know, we were one in 13. And, uh, you know, none of us have come, ever came from a program that really lost. You know, we lost maybe a game here, a game there, but, you know, never, you know, uh, uh, one in 13s. But, uh, you know, Joe was frustrated, but, you know, Chuck did a great job of handling Joe. I mean, Joe was, you know, he was, he was the cornerstone of the franchise. I mean, he was, uh, you know, the, best defensive player in the league at the time. And so, so he had to make sure that he was on board. And uh, I think Joe saw immediately that we were getting better. That's the thing where, you know, you could see each each year. You know, second year, I think we were 5-9, and nine, then 9-5. Nine and five, Then we made the playoffs and the Super Bowls. And, you know, then everything started to, you know, turn around the right way. And, Terry, when, when you look at, you know, Bradshaw and his first several years before, you know, he, he was in the league, he sort of struggled coming along. I certainly would never have made it in, in the in the NFL today because if you're not good after a couple of weeks, it seems like teams are ready to move on from you. Was it obvious at one point when everything sort of clicked for him? Did you notice? you say, you know what, I think he's got it now? Yeah, I think, you know, the first couple of years were, were, you know, I think a little different for Terry because I think he, he – he, uh, he was more willing to, if his receiver wasn't open, well, start run the ball. 
And you, you got to learn to sit in the pocket and let things develop. I think that took them a while to do that. And to incorporate a running game into your into your offense. You know, I don't think he, they ever had, you know, that type of uh, the balance in their attack at Louisiana Tech. So I think uh, those are all things that he had to learn. And he learned them quick. And obviously he did very well with four Super Bowls. So can't take that away from him. And Terry, your last season in the NFL was with the expansion Tampa Bay Bucks, a team you have to talk about losing, unfortunately, when I went 0-14. And your last start, I believe, came against the Steelers that season. So yes, it, did. it had to be had to be tough. What was you know on a team that was losing and as bad as those that that first year team with the Bucks was? What was it like looking at that defense on the other side of the line, going, "Oh my well, goodness, now they're coming from me." Well, first of all, no one saw the NFL like I did. My rookie year at Pittsburgh, we were one and thirteen. Then Super Bowl nine, Super Bowl ten. Then I spent my last year at Tampa 0 and 14. So no one, you know, the two worst teams ever, you know, in, in sandwich between, you know, two, uh, two great Super Bowl teams. And, but it was, it was interesting because I went down there. Steve Spurrier was, you know, the starting quarterback and, uh, we were getting ready to play Pittsburgh and, uh, John McKay said, you know, be, it would be great for you to play against your, your old team. And I wouldn't say, well, who said that? <laughs> so, so we came up to Pittsburgh, and uh, you know this, this was—I mean, the one of thirteen team with Pittsburgh was bad. I mean, this, this was just uh, you know incredibly difficult to uh, even even move the ball. This team, but uh, I mean, there were a bunch of good guys. Everybody tried tried like heck, but uh, you know, just what we weren't—we weren't that talented. But we went up there, and uh, so you know. Every time he dropped back to pass, you know, Joe would blow through the line, grab me, and lay me down. Lambert would blow through the line, grab, lay me down. LC, same way. So we never crossed the 50-yard line. And at halftime, you know, John says, I'm going to put Steve in the second half, see if he can't get something going. Well, they just teed off on Steve, and they just knocked the hell out of him. You know, <laughs> every play, man. He came limping off the field and said, boy, your boys took care of you. And they're beating the hell out of me. <laughs> so... Well, that, that was the stage of that one. But, uh, it was interesting. You know, I knew that was going to be my last year and, uh, it did not go off with a, a bang. Terry, before we let you go, I got to get you, I got to get your thoughts. You know, I know we talked about it a moment ago. Steelers, are the Steelers going to be a, a, a team that gets the opportunity to go to the Super Bowl? You find them back in the AFC championship game and are, is this a Super Bowl squad? Do you think the jury's out on this team? Steelers are always that type of team that been once you think they're down and out, they just turn things around. And Ben can do that so well. And they've you know, they've got a lot of talent. And uh I really think they're gonna be in the hunt. You know, whether they go to the Super Bowl, I don't know, but you know, I think you know, Mike Tomlin I think is a wonderful coach. I know Bradshaw has said differently over the years, but uh you know, Mike has averaged ten year ten wins a season, you know, and that's not not, not easy to do in the NFL. But I and I think that the players really play hard for him. And, uh, you know, I think they'll get, uh, I think they'll get a crank around here. So Terry, before we let you go, how can our listeners stay up to date with what you're doing now or, or follow you, whether it's online or it's on social media? Well, I'm on Facebook, you know, I, 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 I enjoy some of the people on Facebook, so we have a good time with that. But, you know, I don't do much social media. You know, I don't, I don't post much stuff. I sort of just, you know, things is the people send me that I find interesting. I'll put on to other people. So, you know, it's fun, but, uh, I enjoy watching the live football games at this time of the year. So that's what, that's what uh, makes my, makes my fall and winter. <laughs> Same here. Well, Terry, thank you so much for taking time out of your night to come back and be a part of the show. It's, it's always great for Bob and I to get to spend some time with you. Anytime, guys. You got my number. Okay. Thanks, take Terry. Care take care. All the best to you and your family. Thank you. Take care. Former Notre Dame and Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback Terry Hanratty. We've got our next guest, Tony Collins. Hanging on the line, we're going to get to Tony on the other side of this quick station ID.